that bed. Come on. Did you know that lockpicking in Dungeons & Dragons 5e just doesn't even work for most characters? Look at this. Locked doors. Characters who don't have the key to a locked door can pick the lock with a successful dexterity check. Doing so requires thieves tools and proficiency in their use. Fortunately, I think that most people ignore the proficiency requirement because when you look at the description of thieves tools, it says, proficiency with these tools lets you add your proficiency bonus, etc., etc. Kinda contradicting the DMG by implying that any character can at least attempt to pick a lock with these tools even without proficiency in their use. You just won't add your proficiency bonus. But what really gets me, what really grinds my lock gears, what tickles my tumblers, <laughs> Is that a good thing? Uh, what gets me about D&D style D20 fantasy lock picking is that it's less fun to pick a lock in D&D than it is to pick a lock in games like Skyrim, based on D&D. You're stealth squatting around, sneaking up to doors or chests, and you enter this brief but engaging mini game where you have to carefully just slide a lock pick just the right way to open the lock. You're in, you get a little dopamine pump from the XP, and oh my god, we just got caught, time to go. And some of you may remember that I made a video complaining about this very thing like two years ago, and I shared my homebrewed happy medium between the elegant simplicity of a D20 roll and the exciting tension of a full-on minigame, where I linked lockpicking to some relevant 5e character features while keeping it possible for any character and simple for the game master. But now, based on community feedback, I have made a couple straightforward adjustments, and we're gonna check it out. That's, that's what it looks like. First, round your locks DC to the nearest five. For example, DC 13 becomes DC 15. In my experience, most lock DCs tend to fall around 15 anyway, so that's the example we're gonna focus on. And just like usual, that rounded DC represents the lock's difficulty, but it is no longer a target number for your roll. It just gives us the general level of complexity for the lock, which I have called lock complexity, because I'm very creative. And referring to this very straightforward table, our DC 15 example lock has a complexity of three. Now, if your complexity is only one or two, then you don't even need these tools to try to pick that lock. This low complexity represents something like a hook or a latch rather than an actual lock and there's no reason you wouldn't be able to just use a dagger or just about anything small enough to try to work it open. So to pick our example DC 15 lock with a complexity of three, you do need to have thieves tools. But with these house rules, anyone can try to pick a lock with thieves tools, even if they don't have proficiency in their use. Then here's where the tension starts to come in. The lock's complexity also determines the amount of time required to pick the lock. Specifically, the complexity equals the number of rounds required. So our DC 15 lock with a complexity of three would take three rounds to open. In D&D 5e, three rounds means only 18 seconds. In many old school RPGs, three rounds would mean 30 seconds or even three minutes. Just use the amount of time as rounds are defined in your system of choice. It's all good as long as you're consistent. Finally, the lock picking roll. This is also determined by our lock's complexity where each level of complexity adds 2d6 to this dice pool style roll. Meaning that to open our DC 15 lock with a complexity of three, we need thieves tools, three rounds of time, and a roll of 6d6. Now this is the main part about how you pick the lock. If the player completes their lock picking roll without rolling any ones, their character successfully picks the lock. If a player rolls a one during their lock picking roll, the character fails and the lock resets. This means that outside of combat, you just roll all the d6s at once, but during combat, or really during initiative, when your rogue is trying to unlock the door so your party can escape the room before it fills with sand, or open the chest in the dragon's hoard where it hides a blade of dragon slaying, you roll two d6 per round. Remember, you're not trying to beat a DC anymore, you're just trying to roll those dice without getting any ones. So outside of combat, there might not be any time pressure besides staying hidden. But if you're unlocking something during initiative, 
getting a one and restarting your lock picking efforts is a big risk. And that risk is what creates tension and makes this more fun, in my opinion. And because we're talking about thieves here, of course, there's a catch. Characters trained in lockpicking get a number of re-rolls to avoid failing their lockpicking roll. Any 5e character with proficiency in thieves tools can re-roll a number of ones equal to their proficiency bonus to avoid failing their lockpicking roll. Furthermore, 5e characters with expertise in thieves tools can re-roll a number of ones equal to double their proficiency bonus. Characters from other RPG systems may re-roll a number of times at the game master's discretion based on the character's background, current skill set, knowledge and experience of thievery, luck, or favor with the gods. Regardless of the system, a character regains all expended rerolls after a night's rest. So right now, I'm a level 1 D&D 5e rogue with proficiency in thieves tools facing a DC 15 lock. Complexity is 3, it's going to take me 18 seconds and a roll of 66 with no ones. If I'm outside combat, I roll them all at once. So I rolled one one right here, but with a proficiency bonus of plus two, I can totally re-roll that twice if I need to. And I got a six, so I am good to go. Lock opened. And if I was doing that during combat, I roll two d6 per round. Round one, I roll two d6. No ones, we're good. No ones, still good. Final round, really don't wanna screw it up now. And we're good to go. Didn't even need a reroll. Let's just try one more time for the heck of it. Oh, okay. Two ones. So I didn't use any rerolls yet. Let's see. Good on that one. And good on that one as well. So we still made it through, but that's all of our rerolls with only a proficiency bonus of plus two. No. For everyone who's already tearing up the comments section, I wrote this little section called That's Too Easy Slash Hard. Replace the D6s with D4s or D8s for higher or lower probability of failure, respectively. In a dungeon or any environment with many locks, only a short period of rest may be required to regain expended rerolls. Each reroll used may add one required round of picking. And recommended, any failure may result in signs of tampering such as noticeable scratch marks, a lodged lockpick, or a jammed lock. This last one is recommended because that way, even outside of combat, when there may be no immediate consequences for fumbling this lockpicking attempt, the signs of tampering may be noticed by the lock's rightful owner at some point in the future, creating this delayed complication that might come back to haunt the thief later. And that's all the info you need to run this lockpicking minigame at your table, but if you want it laid out in a cool and clean PDF that I designed myself, you can pick it up on DriveThruRPG for but one dollar through the link below, or pick it up from my Patreon shop tab where it's bundled with a heist-themed 5e one-shot adventure, a horde on display. Wink wink, there's a dragon involved. But however you're able to support, whether it's likes, comments, or even joining Patreon to directly support what I do and get a new 5e resource every month, thank you, and keep building. <sighs> Wait a second. I'm in. What? Do you guys hear that?